for the pastry cream. So this is uh, the pastry cream of Celine out of Wayne Gislin's book, um, Professional Baking. So we're going to start with um, our milk. And our first sugar. And we're just going to scald this. The scalding is just under boil. So when you start to see a little bit of bubbles, then it's there. You want to make sure that you stir the sugar into the milk. Sometimes if you have enough sugar, the sugar will actually start to cook and burn before it gets wet. So, so we're going to scald the milk and the sugar. While that's working, you're going to take the second sugar and the cornstarch. And this is just my little way I like to do it. Okay. I like to do the sugar and corn starch first. That over there. And then I like to whisk that together to kind of break up the corn starch and break up the lumps. And then add in my whole egg and my egg yolk at the same time. And then whisk that till smooth. I just think if you, if you take a second to whisk the cornstarch and your um, sugar together first, I think you have less lumps here and you're not working as hard. So I got some bubbles in my milk, so I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to add a wet donut underneath my egg and cornstarch sugar mix. Right? And why do we do this? To make sure it doesn't move on us while we're whisking. Okay? And then we're going to make sure we hold underneath, right, the handle. It's easier on our wrists. So this is tempering. Okay? So we're going to add half of the milk into the eggs and the starch. Why do we temper? What? to dilute the eggs and to slowly introduce them to the heat. So we're warming them up and we're diluting them at the same time. Okay, so only have to add half of the liquid. Make sure it's mixed in there well. And this is off right now, okay? And then I'm going to add all that back to the pot. Make sure you scrape to get all your product. It's one of the biggest problems I see students do is they don't use all the product they've measured. Okay, we scaled it to the gram, and then they leave like 10 to 15 grams in their, in their measuring cups. Okay, it's not a lot, but you scaled it to the gram for the reason, right? Always make sure you keep your station clean, all right, while you're working. All right, so now we're going to bring this to a boil, and I'm only going to put it on six. So for those of you guys next door, only, I think you have, um, how many dots do you have? So go not a half, go a third of the way up when you're cooking, okay? A third of the dots. All right. So we're going to make sure we're stirring this while we're cooking it. We don't want to go too quick. If we go too quick, it will burn on the bottom, okay? When you're stirring, you want to make sure you're getting into the corners of the pot. You also want to have ready a strainer and a clean bowl. Do not go back into the same bowl that you just got them whisking your eggs corn starch in. Okay. So this will take a little bit of time. It'll go slow, and then all of a sudden it's going to get thick. All right. So the starch is going to, as it heats up, it's going to start to uh, coagulate. Our gel is nice, and your eggs are coagulating. And then once when it comes to a boil, okay, so if I stop stirring, I see the air pockets bubbling. I want to cook it for another 30 seconds or so to make sure that our starch is fully absorbing all the moisture, okay? So making sure you're getting into the corners and scraping the complete bottoms of the pot. If you don't, where you're not hitting, it's going to burn. I've seen this a few times. 
So please scrape the whole bottom of the pot while you're whisking and also go at a lower temperature. Don't try to go fast. I'm on seven. All right, so that's 30 seconds. So the reason we don't want to overcook the starch is because eventually the starch overcooks, it will squeeze out the liquid and it'll start to break apart. And we don't want that to happen, okay? So we're done with the whisk. Put that in your bus tub. Then you're going to grab your pot from underneath. Scrape all the pastry cream. Make sure you press all of the pastry cream through your strainer, okay? This will get rid of the eggs, any scrambled eggs that you might have, or if you have any cornstarch lumps or anything else. Give us a nice smooth product. All right, press it all through. And then look, there's a whole bunch on the bottom of the strainer. Make sure you get that. Okay, you don't need to get a new rubber spatula, just use the same one. Make sure you hit this with a sprayer before you go to the dish machine so it cleans well. The sprayer's hanging on the pot machine, okay? All right, next we're going to add our butter. And we add this last so that it kind of give our, um, a little bit of shine to our pastry cream and it'll give a little bit of a body. So it'll help with the texture. And then last, our vanilla. So this is pure vanilla extract and it does better when it's not heated. If you have imitation vanilla, it works better if it is um, heated to a high heat. But pure vanilla extract, you get the most flavor out of it by adding it after it's cooled down a little bit. All right, so mix till smooth. Scrape down the sides. So I want you to, I chose this bowl for a reason, okay? I chose this bowl because it's nice and wide, and this makes my pastry cream shallow, all right? For that reason, because it's not too thick, if I take a piece of plastic wrap and I press the plastic wrap directly on the pastry cream. Don't just leave it up here, okay? I wanted to touch the pastry cream for a couple of reasons. One, if we put the plastic wrap directly on the pastry cream, it won't get a skin, all right? Some people will sprinkle sugar on top of it to keep it from getting a skin, all right? I like to do the plastic wrap. Um, two, if we left the plastic wrap up high, that gives us a nice hot air pocket where bacteria can grow and we don't want that to happen. So by having the plastic wrap touching it, it's gonna help it to cool down all at the same time. You won't have that hot air pocket. Having it in a large bowl keeps it thin, so we put it in the um, refrigerator to cool down. It'll cool down nice and quick, and we won't get sick from it, okay? If I was doing a larger batch, I would put it on an ice bath to cool it down first, and then I would wrap it up like this, okay? Any questions? It's touch, the plastic wrap is touching the pastry cream. And then you need to make, because everybody's bowls are gonna look the same. So make sure you put your name on it. And then put it in that refrigerator or those three doors back there are a refrigerator as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna whip my whipped cream. Make sure you use a large bowl, a large whip. Make sure that you hold the whip with the handle so that you get air into it. Cream has to be cold so it holds the air. When the fat is cold, it's going to hold the air when you're whipping it. Make sure you're not jamming the whip into the bowl so you don't get little gray spots. You don't want to scrape up parts of the bowl. We use this whip because it's got thin, it's like a piano whip, so it bounces. All right, once when you can pick up the whipped cream with your whip, you're done. Okay, for the pastry cream mousseline, get your uh, pastry cream out of the refrigerator. It has to be cold, okay? If it's not cold, then we need to put it on ice for a little bit. We're gonna take the whisk that we use from the whipped cream, and we're going to break up the pastry cream, making it smooth. All right, we don't 
don't want it to have lumps, the patient pain lumps. So once in it's smooth, you can go ahead and, well, once it's smooth, you can take the whipped cream and add it. And this is just going to lighten up our patient cream a little bit, so it just makes it a little bit nicer for the inside of the eclairs, okay? So you don't have to fold it, you can just use the whisk. And then just whisk it till it's nice and smooth, okay? 